Hi there, it's Jennifer and thanks for stopping by. Today I'm going to do a technique that's been around for ages but I've really never used it much and it's called generation stamping. However, I found a product lately that I find works really well for it so I thought I'd use this technique because it's so fast to do and I quickly created this set of note cards. So you can see the generation stamping there with the butterflies. I did this on the set of note cards and I also created some matching envelopes which I'll show you and I created a glittery uh, kind of gift card box that can hold all these cards so that I can give this as a gift to my son's teacher. Now for all these cards I'm going to be using a few products on all of them. I'm using the Studio Calico Color Theory inks. I found that these inks work the best for generation stamping at least from what I've tried. I'll also be using some Hero Arts Snow Note Cards. These are quick and easy because I can just grab them and go. I don't have to cut and create my own cards and they're nice and thick. And I'll also be using this Clearly Besotted Butterfly Stamp Set. I thought these images were beautiful and that they'd be perfect for generation stamping. There's a lot to these images so I can just stamp them quickly and I have a completed card in no time flat. Now for these cards, I think it's best if I first do my sentiment so that I can work the images around it. And I wanted the sentiment to stand out since they're pretty simple cards, so I decided to do silver stamping. Now I did this in a video a few days ago, and I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm using my favorite uh, silver ink, which is from Hero Arts, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp it on all the cards first. Now I'm going to go back and add some powder onto it to give it a little bit of shimmer, but this stays wet long enough that you don't have to worry about hurrying. But I find by doing an assembly line kind of thing where I stamp all the greetings and then go back and add all the shimmer, then do all the butterflies, it really takes a lot less time to create a bunch of cards at once. Now I turn this into a set of note cards to give as a gift, but you could just skip that part and just quickly make six or seven note cards in no time flat. I'm using the heartfelt thanks and the just because images from that butterfly stamp set. So now to add some shimmer to my silver stamping, I have my Perfect Pearls. This is a pigment powder. It's a great product. I love it. You just put a little bit on with a brush and it adds enough shimmer to really catch the eye on that silver ink. So I'm just using a brush here and I'm just going to kind of pounce it on here. You don't need a whole lot at all. It's kind of like makeup. You don't want to go overboard. And I'm going to go ahead and pounce this powder on to all of the cards. And then I'll come back and knock the rest off. Now after you've brushed off the excess, you could do a light mist of water because this will set when it comes in contact with water. However, since I'm not really using a lot here, I'm not going to worry about setting. I'm just going to leave it and really it won't, won't rub off in the envelope. I'm not worried too much about it. I just quickly brush off really firmly here, brush off the extra powder, and we're good to go. Now it's time to do the generation stamping around the sentiment. Now this generation stamping is a quick and easy way to take one ink and make it look like you have three inks here. So that's actually one red ink that you see. So here is my sentiment. It's got that nice little shimmer to it and it's time to um, add the stamping around it. So I've picked out a butterfly image from the Clearly Besotted set and I'm just going to start with one of them. I have my Studio Calico Color Theory dye inks here. This is my favorite of the colors. It's called Emerald City. I'm going to ink up my stamp really well here and I'm going to stamp it once on the bottom of the card and I'll get a nice dark vibrant image. Now watch, I'm going to stamp it again without cleaning it without wiping it off and then I'll stamp it a third time without cleaning it or wiping it off and you can see each time the color gets a little bit lighter and we end up with what looks like three different shades of the same color three different inks but it's just the one ink now I have tried this generation stamping with other inks and I've never found one that worked quite as well as this Studio Calico Color Theory I don't know what it is but it seems to work great for this technique. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again with a different butterfly. I stamped it once, I'll stamp it again over here, and then a third time towards the top of the card. So you can see how you can get like an ombre effect on a card. Say you did a border stamp and kept repeating it as you went up the card. You can get a great ombre look, and that's kind of what I've achieved with the butterflies here. Now you could try a third, or I'm sorry, a fourth generation with this. With the dark inks, you can get another generation out of it. You can stamp it a fourth time, but with the lighter inks, it's harder to do that. And there we have the completed card. Very quick and easy to do. So I'm going to do it again with another color. This is well red. I know this is a big popular color from this uh, color line. I'm going to go ahead and stamp it once towards the bottom, and you'll see how nice and vibrant it is. Now this ink, it does kind of slightly, slightly smooth out as it dries, but you can see you get a pretty solid image right away. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp it again, kind of, and you'll get like the medium shade here, and then the light shade at the top. I love how it kind of turns into a pink color. It's just beautiful. 
After I've done the big butterflies, I am going in with one of the tiny images that's in the stamp set and doing third generation stamping with those two just to kind of fill in the areas. Now these cards are very simple. You could go back and add some shimmer or some wink of Stella glitter or something to it to oomph it up if you wanted to, but I wanted to keep them simple. Now this one is another color that I thought was beautiful. I thought this blue was just beautiful for third generation stamping also. Most of the Studio Calico inks were great for the three generations. Some of the lighter colors I would just use for two generation though because they're super light, which makes sense. And here are some of the cards I created with the Studio Calico Color Theory inks. And you can see how well these colors work for the generation stamping. You can try them with other inks you may have, but I found these happen to give the best results. So now for matching envelopes, I'm keeping it simple, uh, super simple here. I wanted to be able to have a set of note cards, and I always put in one extra envelope in case the person who does, you know, addresses an envelope messes it up. So I have uh, six cards and six envelope or seven envelopes in there. Now for the envelope, I'm keeping it simple, just doing the silver stamping of the butterfly right on the envelope flap. These are envelopes from Hero Arts. I'm not bothering with adding the perfect pearl pigment powder though. I'm just keeping it simple with the silver stamping only. Now for the card box, I've done this in videos in the past, and I'll link to uh, one of them here so you can see. But I wanted to show you that you could in fact make these card boxes from pretty much any kind of paper. So this is the envelope punch board. This is from We Are Memory Keepers, and it's intended to make envelopes of pretty much any size. But I figured out how to use this envelope punch board to make card boxes. And I actually have the trick for the card box under here, which I'll tell you, but I keep it noted on the bottom so that I don't forget. But I'm going to go through the steps of creating a card box with this envelope board here. Now you can use any cardstock or paper for this. I decided to use glitter paper for fun. And you want to cut it to 9 by 9 So this, is, this piece is already cut to 9 by 9 On one side it's glitter, on the other side it's white. And I decided to do my scoring on the white side, on the back side, because I didn't want to mess up that glitter. Now you put it in the board, and the first time you put it over to 3 and a half, you saw it on the top there. You push the punch button, and then you score along this diagonal line. So you just put your tool in there and pull it down, and you've got a score line. Now we're going to move this over to four and a half. So the first time was three and a half, this time's four and a half. I'm going to punch it by pushing that button on the top and do that diagonal score. Now you don't have to remember any measurements after this. You're just going to take that little point there and line it up with the first score line and punch it by pressing the button up there and doing a score line diagonally down. Now I'm going to go ahead and move it over to the next score line, line it up with that point, punch it, and diagonally score down. This is really easy to do. Again, I've done it like more thoroughly in a video in the past, which I'll link here. But I just wanted to show you again that you can do this from fun paper like this glitter paper. Again, I'm doing this on the back side just so I don't mess up the glitter on the front. And all you're going to do is repeat this for all the four sides. You only have to know those measurements of three and a half and four and a half for the first punches and scores. So now I have the whole paper done. Now, if you take the other side of this little punch board, and put the tip in, the corner tips in, and push the button, it rounds the corners for you. You could skip this if you wanted to, but it gives a nice finished look. So I'm putting all four corners in, pressing it, and you get a nice rounded corner. Now once I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and kind of reinforce all of my score lines here. So I'm going to go through and just fold these over. Now I'm folding it opposite. I'm going to end up um, folding inwards, of course, so that the glitter is on the outside of the box. But again, I don't want to mess up that glitter side with my scoring tool. So I'm just going to go ahead and fold it backwards and then bend it back the other way. Basically, you just want to reinforce all your score lines and get them nice and folded. Now this would be fun to do a, a note card box with a double-sided pattern paper where there's one pattern on one side and a different one on the other side because when they open up the box, they'll see the other pattern. But I thought this glitter on the outside would be a lot of fun. So I just went and I folded all or just reinforced all of those score lines and I'm going to go and bend it back so that the glitter will be on the outside. Now there's one more thing that we need to do this before we glue it together. Now we need to go on one of the sides and put slits. Do you see that slit that I'm cutting right in the bottom? We need to do slits on one side and then on the other side we're going to cut that little corner piece off. So where we're cutting off the corner pieces here will end up being the top of the box. The side with these two little flaps will be the bottom of the box. And this just helps to put the card box together easily. So now I'm going to fold these flaps over and put some adhesive on them. This is just going to help hold our box together. And I'm going to take these side flaps and fold them in and put some adhesive just along that bottom diagonal. And I'll do it on the other side here too. This will allow our box to stay glued together. I will go back later and squirt in some glossy accents, a strong adhesive to hold it there well. 
Now I'm just going to fold this in and press this uh, the, the bottom flap onto the side flaps. And it just tucks together nicely and it looks kind of like an envelope but with some dimension to it. After I've kind of squeezed this together, make sure that it's staying adhered, I'm going to go ahead and stick my hand in and make sure those flaps, those tiny little flaps that we had, um, adhere to the side of the box on the inside. And again, I would go in and squirt some strong adhesive in here just to make sure it doesn't come apart, especially since this is glitter paper. And there we have a fun little note card box. It looks like a, you know, an envelope with dimension that we can put all of our note cards into. So I have six cards here and seven envelopes, and this fits in there with plenty of room. You could put in many more cards if you wanted to, at least double. But I didn't really have time to create any more, and I thought this would be the perfect amount to give to my son's teacher. So now I decided to keep the outside of this simple once again. So I'm just going to take some ribbon and tie it into a bow. And I stamped one of the butterflies, cut it out, and I put some dimensional adhesive on it that I'm just going to glue onto the bow. In the other videos, I showed how you can do a, a ribbon through it that you can go back and retie again and again if you wanted to. But for this, I wanted to keep it simple. So there you can see how you can use that envelope punch board not only to make your own envelopes, but to make a note card box set too. I've made sets of note cards like this before for favors at baby showers or at wedding showers, and then I make them for gifts all the time. So there you have a way you can take one ink and use three generations of it to make a fun uh, one-layered card that take, takes no time at all. If you're interested in any of the products I use, they're linked below on my YouTube description. If you go over to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com, I have a shopping discount code for the Studio Calico inks that I used in this video. Thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll see you again soon.